June 19th? <laughs> June 17th. Why? I, I just read this. No, it says 19th. Uh, Miami Township Trustees I'd entertain a motion for adoption of minutes for our normal meeting on June 3rd. So moved. Second. Any discussion or corrections? No. What, would you call the roll? We move and second it to adopt the minutes of June 3rd, 2024 as presented. And Mr. Mucher? Yes. Ms. Moyer? Yes. Mr. Hollister? Yes. Minutes are adopted. Uh, at our last meeting, there were two special meetings that we didn't vote on minutes. Uh, I thought we hadn't voted on any of them. Is that the truth? We so there are three meeting, special meetings we haven't voted on. Right. And our last meeting, there were two that we hadn't voted on, May 10th and May 17th. And then since our last meeting, we had a special meeting, June 7th. Uh, they're rather brief. No actions were taken. Uh, are there any? The May 10th meeting, any corrections, comments? I move to approve. A second. Please call the roll. Move and second it to adopt the minutes of the special meeting held May 10th, 2024. Mr. Mucher? Yes. Mr. Moyer? Yes. Mr. Hollister? Yes. Motion approved. May 17th meeting, there were no actions taken. I move to approve. I second. Please call the roll. Move and second it to adopt the minutes of the special meeting of May 17th, 2024. Mr. Winter? Yes. Mr. Moyer? Yes. Mr. Hollister? Yes. Motion approved. And since our last meeting uh, on June 7th, we had a special meeting that, uh, at which there was no action taken. Any comments? I'll move to approve those. A second. Please call the roll. It's been moved and seconded to adopt the minutes of the special meeting on June 7th, 2024. Mr. Mucher? Yes. Ms. Moyer? Yes. Mr. Oliver? Yes. The motion is adopted. Uh, I would entertain a motion to approve payment of bills totaling $31,789.22 from the general funds $7,962.95 from the cemetery $2,564.04 from fire $19,000 $227.22. Road, $2,044.01. Any comments? Okay. Any motion? I'll move to pay them. Second. And now any comments? And now any comments? Denny, that's awfully low. Is, have we been running like a two people shift or something? That's, that, that includes street fare, $19,000? Yeah, we've actually had a number of days that are two. But, but I also haven't had a lot of expenditures oh, that oh, are I not payroll related to. Yeah. But yeah, it's definitely low. I was going to comment on that myself. Pleasantly low. Is that what you were going to say? It is, sure. It is, except, <laughs> except for the stress of the two people. Yeah. Two yeah, 100%. Wait, would you say that again? Two people were off? No, so no. We we had a number of shifts where there are only two, not three people. Yeah. I mean, and the irony line is we we actually had the Peyton's picked up, Peyton and Gavin both picked up quite a number of shifts too. So, yeah. We call the roll, please. Then we have been seconded to approve payment of bills in the amount of thirty-one thousand seven hundred and eighty-nine dollars and twenty-two cents as enumerated. Ms. Moyer? Yes. Mr. Mutcher? Yes. Mr. Allister? Yes. Motion to approve. Anything from correspondence that should go on our 
agenda. Um, I'd like to know more about the SAM registration, but um, I, I, I don't think that's a hurry. I'll kick that to the next meeting. That's spam. Huh? That is spam. Are you being facetious? Um, no, we get those about every three days. Yeah, except for that when I was reading through the, uh, the slurf that ARPA thing, they, they talk about how that has to be current in order to operate on that. So I yeah, can, I, can, I can update you on that. So originally I had um, paid a third party company because the process of actually renewing that SAM agreement is an absolute nightmare and a half. Mm -hmm. Colin had the same experience when he tried to do it. Um, the, the previous year that Colin did it and renewed it and ended up using a third party company, which was the same company that I contacted to renew it, mm -hmm. um, Colin swore up and down that he had renewed it for three years because you can do it for one, two, and three years. Um, but it had lapsed. I contacted the company three months before it lapsed, paid $500 for them to process it, and then I found out that they haven't processed it, and I've gotten absolutely nothing but runaround from so these guys. It's something we need, but we don't need them to do it. For we us. have to. We have to have it. We have and to have it. So mm -hmm. when they send us say when they send it to us and say it's going to expire, does that mean? That's a third party company telling us? Like, how do we know? That is a third party company knowing it, but like Chris actually said, it's, I'm not sure if you said spam, spam. or scam. Spam. But either, either one. applies. <laughs> but we still have to take action. Okay, yeah. By do. August. Well, take and action I actually, with the legitimate operation that we have been dealing with, yeah. mm -hmm. as opposed to these things that just keep coming in. So we do, it, that, that is a, a, a um, let me try and get this out right. That is public record. So you have God knows how many companies that will just send you unsolicited okay, okay. stuff for it. So I'm still trying to get the darn thing addressed. It's just been a, an yeah. absolute nightmare and a half. So, uh, but our SAM number is, we're, we're not expected for real. Okay. But Go yeah, I'll, so I'll, I will get it taken care of. Thank John, you. I appreciate your okay. brief synopsis about the um, letter you wrote to the Daily News. Or the responses you gave to the Daily News. Oh, regarding the uh, update on Kingwood Solar. Mm -hmm. uh, the latest I've heard is... Well, first I'd say, it's, um, they sent us eight questions about our opposition to Kingwood Solar Development and associated financial costs. Just to let people know what they are talking about. And there will be a story, latest I've heard, it will be in this coming Sunday's paper. So they were interviewing all the townships involved, and uh, who knows what else. But more an update, I think, than any great <coughs> expose, or I don't expect it to be new news, but we'll see. Uh, and you gave them, she asked for the total of legal fees and you gave it to her? Or yes. Uh, um, any other items on this list? Um, I, see I, just want to, I just want to say that, you know, Madison Hale, the auditor, there's, there's, I brought a list to us of things we all worked on to last week to get for the auditor, and we didn't. It's, None of us clicked on the second tab on the Excel spreadsheet where there's like about 20 or 30 invoices um, that she wants copies of. And um, I know one of the things that's the um, fiscal officer, but she mentioned that she there's, she doesn't know where to find them all. So I think we all, I, I'll, if we could all look at that and offer her some assistance, I mean, the auditor's asking us for them too, you know. Uh, well, I'll call her tomorrow. I have time. I can well, take a look at the list. Have you looked at that list? Oh, oh I meant to print it up for you guys. Um, I just figured Margaret would come back and help her with that stuff. I don't think Margaret's coming back. She kept saying she was, so I didn't know there was a change. I can help you. Know, too. I know where all that stuff is. It's not 
find out where it is. Yeah. 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 Well, I'll check in. I didn't in. know it wasn't going to get done. Well, I'll check in with Gina tomorrow and see what we need to do. What's the deadline on that? Um, last week. Okay. I mean, she's she. What I, I don't know this. You can see if she said last week. She said, "How about I come by on Thursday and get all your things?" Mm -hmm. That was last Thursday. But you know, it takes as long as it takes. I guess I don't know if there's a breaking point for them. Okay. And then the Otama thing. I, I would like to ask for a discussion about that. Um, I put that under new business. And. Um, and this little thing, I'll, I'll change it to the next meeting too. That, that's related to our same thing, ARPA thing. All right. Uh, we do have Lisa Abel from the Development Corporation here. Are there any other public agenda items that are not already on the agenda? I would like to just say a shout out to Street Fair at some point. Do so. uh, We will have some Street Fair discussion. I can tack it on to there. Okay, uh, as part of the Fire Department report. That, yeah, that would fit. Lisa. Lisa Abel from the Yellow Springs Development Corporation. I'm uh, the, currently I'm the interim uh, director for the Yellow Springs Development Corporation. Um, this year it's been an unpaid position. And um, we've been working on some things that we we decided we need to hire a part-time person to, to take us to the next level. I won't be applying for that job, so I'm not asking for funds for myself. I am making a request for funds. And I wanted to just kind of give you an update on where we've been. Um, we started forming in 2019. We were officially designated and accepted by the state in 2020 which is when COVID happened, which was a great time to be doing economic development. Um, that's also when the fire station project started, where we were asked to help uh, the township sell the old fire station. 2021, we completed that sale, and the uh, COVID shutdown eased later in 2021. After the fire station, uh, the college asked us to explore a different ownership model for the wellness center so we did um, quite a bit of work on that and then uh, at the end of the college decided that they would just take it take it themselves 2022 we did um, outreach to, to uh, local businesses especially on the um, non-retail um, more the uh, commercial industrial um, types of businesses and we did some realignment around priorities and goals and around that time was when we started hearing about these larger manufacturing companies coming to this part of Ohio specifically um, Intel coming to New Albany um, which is on the east side of Columbus and about 71 miles or an hour and five minute drive from here Honda LG battery in Jeffersonville which is 23 miles 32 minutes from here and then just most recently, the Joby Aviation um, Air Taxi Project in Vandalia, which is 24 miles, 28 minute drive. Did you uh, say the Honda LG is a 32 minute drive from here? Yes. Mm -hmm. well, depends on who's driving. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, um, so in, at the end of 2022, we realized that the, the stack up of these large manufacturers coming to Ohio meant that they were going to also bring, or their suppliers, some of them, some of the suppliers were going to follow them to Ohio or to the greater region. And those suppliers don't normally just supply one big company, they're supplying others. So they're going to be thinking about where they should locate, where they can service Intel or Honda, but also some of their other customers who may be in Indiana or Kentucky or Michigan. So 
Um, so we realized that that really in, at the end of 2022, we're we're answering kind of a once in a generation opportunity for Yellow Springs to actually get a place at the table regionally to let folks know we're open for business. We'd like to bring some of those smaller businesses here. We've seen some inquiries already for like someone who wants 50,000 square feet, they want to be next to a railroad. Yeah, that's not us, but we do have some space. We have um, 20 acres at the CBE and another 30 um, acres in our back pocket. Plus we have some pockets of space for small, um, small manufacturers around town. So that kind of um, kind of re-energized YSDC in terms of okay, we need to get on board with this. And so we, we took care of a lot of things last year um, to, to prepare for this. And uh, this year we've been rolling out um, marketing materials, a video, a PowerPoint presentation, and a, um, a map, an interactive map that can be placed online, they can be placed at the chamber, which is probably where people are going to look for things, or at least a link from the chamber site. Um, they can be packaged up and folks can take them on the road if they want to go talk to, to suppliers or these other networks. And um, also the other thing that happened last year was uh, we <coughs> applied for a, a solar um, community solar exploration project from the Department of Energy and we received $100,000 towards that. And um, we also last year took on another project that we're just calling Goldfinch, um, where uh, a local entity asked us to help with disposal of some of their assets. And as we, we did a lot of due diligence because we were gonna take on a lot more risk than we did with the fire station. So we had a lot more work we needed to do, which included things like um, uh, title search and um, uh, estimates and things like that. Um, and then it turns out that um, I think we were not moving as fast as the folks at Goldfinch wanted us to because we did want to make sure that this was an investment we could handle. And so they, uh, they chose to go and move out. All of that to say that we've learned a lot from these, these various projects. And um, so this year, as we're rolling out these marketing materials, um, and I'm kind of observing what we need from from to represent Yellow Springs Miami Township regionally is we need a seat at the table. We need someone who uh, willingly goes out and meets people, goes to meets and greets, remembers names and faces, um, and can can kind of you know find their way to all of those other sessions, state development coalition meetings or. Miami Valley Regional Planning Commission, th things like that. Right now, Brian House does a lot of that, but we need someone else following him because I don't think he'll do that forever. So this seems like a good time for us to um, to find that person. And anyone who knows me know that knows that's not my personality, that's not my style. Um, those big meetings at the meet and greet, you'll find me by the snack table. Um, so uh, so we need someone else who can do this work, which is why I said I will not be applying for this position. Um, so that's kind of where we're at now. And so we are asking um, the village and the township to help um, with an investment toward this position uh, with the intention that it'll help get us on the map, get us in front of these larger manufacturers, get us in front of their suppliers and, um, and start to um, attract some of those folks to, to our town. So that's uh, that's one here. That's the end. Do you have any questions? What's the budget? The budget is fifty to sixty thousand, and it depends on the skill set that we attract. And it'll be a uh, ten ninety nine position because we we need to see how this works out before we decide that we're going to pay as a payroll and benefits. That is, it's a, a contract position. Correct. Correct. Um, Backing up, you, you you went through activities. I mean, I'm repeating things that Chris was one of the founding mm -hmm. members of the, of the corporation. I replaced him, mm -hmm. and now Marilyn is our right. uh, uh, Corey Van Hostel 
has been in there, I guess she started when I started. Mm -hmm. so, uh, then she had that household representing us also. So in those activities that you've already described, how much money was spent already? Not, not on the new stuff, but... Sure. So just to keep the doors open, it's about um, 10 to 12,000 a year. And that's mostly accounting fees. We have to pay for um, uh, someone to do a 1099, someone to do an audit, and someone to keep our books. Um, and then uh, when we do these projects, uh, there are fees around um, legal and um, more accounting fees. Um, with the Project Goldfinch, there were fees for appraisals and fees for title search. I don't have the number in front of me, right. but that's so. So in a year where we don't we don't have a major project, it may be ten to twelve thousand, just about a thousand a month. In a year where we have something big, it could be two to three times that much. That's expenditures. That no, that's no salary. We're not, we haven't been paying salary out of our own pocket. And what did? Uh, I mean, I, I know the answer to this, but anyway, uh, what did YSDC get from the sale of the firehouse? Mm -hmm. um, I think, uh, I didn't look at those numbers but recently, but I think it was 35, 30,000, is that something? Yeah, my memory is it was towards 40,000. Okay. And then the, the village, the township, we pay, quote, dues. Mm -hmm. Clifton Village was paying, but stopped. Yeah, they're not part of the And is anyone else paying? Yeah, everyone at the table. Is uh, the school paying something? Yes. The, so just so everybody else knows, we have a board of um, up to 10 members. We, by by Ohio, the rules of Ohio, we have to have 40% as elected officials and school board elected officials don't count. So basically it's elected officials or their designees. So the township has two seats and the village has two seats. So that's our 40%. Other members include school board, um, chamber of commerce, we have a couple at-large positions, the foundation. So all of those positions pay for the seats except for usually like, there's usually like one um, member at large who doesn't. If they're just a community member, we don't ask them to pay $500. I am um, likening this to this position to like a headhunter. If I get a business, somebody who, who knows all the spots and knows the people and can go out and get kind of a reverse, is, is there, are there not people that do this that, that we could tap into, people that, that, that communities hire to go get them some business? I guess it's not that easy. Uh, Said you're looking Maybe. for some some skills, Maybe. Some but it's it, the, the 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 regional community is pretty um, tight. Mm -hmm. So it's a lot of those you go to these meet and greet meetings, and that's where you get the scoop. Um, so mm -hmm. it's, and they, it, it's yeah. kind of a trust based. We yeah. know you. We know we know friends. We think this might be a good. Fit. Okay. But what, what, what kind of meeting we meet? I'm talking about like, like state and development coalition meetings yeah. or uh, regional planning or um, kind of those types. Get into the people, the, the spin off businesses, the supplier businesses. Right. So, the, so we, we get inquiries, um, also Green County Department of Development, and we get inquiries, but um, th there's no filtering. So, again, like yeah. 50,000 square foot. Yeah. So, it's, it's really about, I, you know, so the contract position could be maybe a headhunter type of person. I hadn't considered that, but the executive committee can think about that. Um, but it's really just just helping to identify the fit for us, fit for mm -hmm. fit for the business. And I should mention there's already a um, there's already a new um, well, new to us cleaning room services business that's moved into Millworks. So. Intel could be potential. They don't tell us who the customers are, but you know, that kind of sweet spot. But what kind of business? Clean room services. Mm -hmm. So, and Intel is going to be like 90% clean rooms. What's clean room? Um, 
it's it's a it's a special room set up so that um, you don't have any um, contaminants in your manufacturing okay. process. So it's very HEPA filters and gallons and airflow controls. Okay. Is is that public information? Has it already been advertised or has it been a press release that this business is moving to the Um yeah, I don't know. I, I I need to talk with the mower center and find out what, what I mean, not that it's a secret, but right, right, still. right, right, right. Yes. No, I agree. It should be yeah. front page news, right? Well, I am. I've been our representative on this, and I, I'm new, and I listen to you guys, and um, I really feel the urgency. Like there's, we've talked about economic development for a long time, the need for a, a tax base and development to fund our small community, um, but this seems like a precipitous time when there's a lot happening, and. Uh, heard it been said in the meetings, like, it's now, we're going to get out there, we're going to do it now, or it's going to pass us. Mm -hmm. There's not going to be a huge window of Yeah, we have, you know, and that's why we're, that's why we're gearing up now. Um, Intel has pushed back a little bit their start date to 2027. Honda's into 2025, 26, but, so Honda's suppliers are already starting to think about where they want to locate. Um, Intel's, they may be holding off a little bit because they won't have any work to do with the, with the plant here for another few years. And then Joby is a scale-up, so right now it's pretty small, but they expect to, you know, gear up, and, then, and they haven't given us exact time, like five years to start to gear that up. So, so uh, again, Joby is an a airplane? Air taxis. Air taxis. Yeah. So imagine, Vice President of the Intel plant lives here and takes an air taxi to work. Is that a uh, unmanned air taxi? Unmiloted? Um, yeah, I don't know. Or uncrewed is what I, I guess I should say. I think, I'm not sure. I'm not I sure. thought maybe it was. Yeah, I'm not sure. Huh. So yeah, I mean, Marilyn, to your point, I think it's, um, what we're asking for is, is, is an investment from our partners who benefit from um, economic development um, uh, increases, you know, as we add more jobs, as we improve properties. Um, and then the hope is add housing. Well, we are, and right, with Fisher, and, and, then, and then more housing where, where it fits. Sure. Improve housing. Sure. Yet, um, when we did, we did a, a, a kind of a dry run of our marketing materials with, with some regional partners a couple weeks ago, and, and one of the, um, one of the things that, that we got as feedback was that probably Yellow Springs is going to be attracting uh, more of the professionals um, from those facilities and those suppliers and not so much the line workers. But basically because, you know, housing is a little bit more expensive and that kind of thing. So, but those are still folks that bring, bring families and they bring, if they're, you know, they're, they're moving here and they're, they're commuting to one of these sites. Um, they may also decide someday to start their own thing. And they, if they're already here, that's, you know, that's how a lot of our industry started here years ago. <clears throat> Has there been any message from the village as to their level of commitment? That's at seven. Hmm? That's at seven tonight. Seven o'clock. <laughs> what is the ratio of their budget to ours? I don't. I don't even know what your budget is. We're, if you add everything together, let's say we're over two million. And if you add everything in the village together, twenty million. That might be a little high, but it's close. somewhere in between. Um, and then I guess you could look at it the other way. How much do you bring in revenue-wise? Um, from improved properties or businesses, effectively. what would be the potential? That, in a, so in a business park, if we would to land some businesses, those property values would go up and be more revenue for the oh, yeah. township. Um, okay. Because I have the, uh, the feeling like we, we put in a big chunk uh, to the firehouse 
sale. Um, and that's, <clears throat> that's in my mind, but I also think we ought to participate. Mm -hmm. um, and so that was also fee for what, what was also free for services, right? I mean, Pardon? it wasn't just a giveaway, it was fee for services with the fire station that, sale. In effect, mm -hmm. well, we could have done it ourselves, in, in theory. Mm -hmm. but what, what we got was, um, instead of just putting it out there and selling it to someone, I think we you achieved your goal of getting a business in there that was a multiplier. I think it's safe to say that we had it. We definitely had a, we had, we had a multiplier. selection. Yeah, we had a selection process. It wasn't just highest bidder. It was um, best impact, best fit. So. Any Chris, you have anything to say? Yeah, I might. Um, make no mistake, I'm. I'm very economic development pro, pro very economic development. Um, but I feel like I'm a little behind the eight ball here because I didn't see your letter until about four o'clock this afternoon. Um, and I noticed uh, it was addressed to Marilyn and to Don and to Gina Gunderkline and not me. And I just wondered why I wasn't considered while sending a letter to. Sure. And, um, and I think part of it is my not understanding your process. Yeah. I um, I did the same thing with the village, so I sent it to the president of the board, and then I sent it to the two representatives of YSDC, and I sent it to whoever is kind of responsible for the budget or can answer questions about the budget. So it wasn't an intentional thing, it was just I thought when I sent it to the president of the board, that that thing gets distributed to you all. I don't worry really about this. Obviously. Well, anyway. Um, Does that answer your and question? So, um, and so, uh, when I did see it, uh, I crafted a response to Marilyn, because she's the one who sent it to me. I didn't, send, I didn't have it for you directly, because at the time, I didn't have the letter. And my response was that I couldn't support it until I saw an ROI on for the for Miami Township from YSDC. Um, that is a list of projects that contribute to the township uh, tax base, either through building development or new business, uh, whatever it is that would generate taxes for the township. I'm not sure I'm aware of any, but maybe there is some. As I say, I just sent that letter this afternoon, uh, or not letter, but a request for that information very late. And I guess we can get that at some, some point, and that might be a determining factor. Um, in addition, as Don mentioned, I have been uh, part of the uh, YSDC. I was on the original organizing committee that uh, developed the whole idea of the YSDC. And I signed the letter of incorporation with the state to get the YSDC started. I also wrote the um, nonprofit uh, request from the, from the federal government, the IRS, a lengthy document, I must say. And then spent a year at meetings, and um, it just seemed like we'd end up being the bank for this organization. Um, I don't know of anyone else, again, I haven't been there, who's put the kind of money into it that we have. Lisa mentioned that we uh, approached the uh, YSTC to try and help us sell the fire station. In actuality, I offered the fire station to YSDC to try and give them some seed money so they could go out and do some projects that would uh, raise some capital, uh, or excuse me, that would raise some taxes uh, for the people uh, who are participating in YSDC. 
And as Don would say, that was about $35,000 in, uh, in commissions that we gave. And also, uh, as a result of that sale, um, we were forced, the township was forced to pay a um, survey fee of about $2,500, which is normally um, provided by the um, buyer. Uh, I'm not sure how we got forced into that, but we did. Keep in mind that we sold the building to YSDC. We weren't, they were not our agent. We sold it to them uh, in the end of 19, in December, I believe December of 19. It might have been a little bit earlier. Uh, so we were forced to pay that survey fee, and then come to find out we were forced to pay half of a radiation mitigation radon, or radon, not radiation, radon mitigation that, that we that we knew nothing about. There was no inspection prior to the sale by the by the buyer. Uh, so it just popped up and you know we got a bill for eleven thousand uh, dollars. Thanks. And then three months later after the sale, we got another bill for approximately three thousand dollars because the buyer did not change the utilities over uh, to their name. So it just kept uh, accumulating in the mill area in the township's name. And we ended up having to pay about $3,000 for that, including insurance, which was never switched over to somebody else. It was always covered by, by us. And so that was another contribution. And then, of course, as Don mentioned, we've been paying dues on a regular basis for for a while individuals, and then for a while two people. And I believe we paid an initial five thousand dollar startup fee to get the ball rolling to pay for lawyers. Uh, the lawyer fees early on were substantial. Uh, apparently, they're still substantial, and that's where a lot of this thirty-five thousand plus. So if you add them all up, you're over $50,000 that we contributed to the development corporation. And unless, you know, unless I end up seeing a, you know, a return on investment sheet that shows a substantial tax gain for Miami Township, I, I feel, you know, I just feel like we've put in our fair share of money into this operation. Um, with a, with a minimal amount of uh, end result. Is there a question in there? No, there wasn't a question. It was information for the public. Um, well, I think that uh, what you're saying is relevant. <laughs> and I would, I would put it here. <laughs> and then I would put it parallel or next to the fundamental question, is this something that ought to be done and what would our share be? And then, well, have we already paid our share or have we, uh, and I would want to know where is the village, what are they prepared? Uh, the implication that I was trying to make, well, the argument I was trying to make in my first statement is that I see the village as, <clears throat> you know, the elephant in the room, and we're the mouse, the small donkey, or in, in terms of uh, taxes and cash flow. Uh, regardless, I think we should be part of it. The question is how much, and. I think we put in more than the village so far. Yeah, we do have, have to take a look at our finances because we're spending a substantial amount of money out of the general fund. And this kind of commitment can't come from anywhere else other than the general fund. Um, and that might make things tight. I don't know. I haven't had a chance to. Like I said, I just heard about this at 4 o'clock this afternoon or sooner. And so I haven't had a chance to look over finances to see whether there's a $20,000 chunk of change sitting there. Um, well, 
I don't know which to address first, funding or um, why I think it's important. How about why you think it's important and then funding? Am I able to ask a question? Sorry. Sure, go ahead. Um, it, it seems like there's a lot of conversation about like what the township versus the village is doing. I would actually be more concerned about what is YSDC doing to continue supporting funding this position in partnership with the village and township. Mm -hmm. And so what are their efforts and what are they anticipating to put into this position financially? Because mm -hmm. I think that also plays a huge factor into how many you guys are willing to put in. You know, if, if the answer is none, well, why should anybody else, right? But the point is, so. We have, um, we have um, access to some of the funds for community solar, if needed. It's supposed to be for the community solar, but yeah, we have access to those funds. So we don't know yet. You know, it's really around, here's the thing. YSDC was, um, designated as an economic agent by the village and the township. And so we are doing work toward economic development um, in partnership with those two organizations. And I get the sense sometimes when I talk with especially the township that um, we'd like to back away from the deal. And I think that's a question you all need to really think about. You don't need to be at the table with it. You don't think it's important to you. Um, well, I think it's important. And I understand why you might be a little bit discouraged, although it's a very tough problem that people have been trying to solve for decades. You can't just say, well, we gave you $50,000, where's our return? Why didn't you solve the problem yet, this intractable I think it's not, it's intractable over time, but I think there's gonna come a time. There was a time when the Millworks wasn't doing as well as it is, and now it's here. There was a time when there wasn't a Cresco with plans for expansion, and now it's here. Um, there was a time when there wasn't a 90 unit housing development. So I know it's hard to think that, oh, we're always on the verge of landing something, and that's, I'm sure, I know I'm discouraged. Um, I think one of the ways it relates to us is we're really professionalizing and expanding our fire department. We've got, we've just doubled the number of professional positions, career track positions we have. Um, ideally, we'd be putting four people on duty, and that, that's max, really what we should be doing. And when I sit and worry about this at home, I think, well, you know what, maybe we're on Maybe we're on this verge. Maybe we, this is the beginning of a housing development and maybe there will be more because we, we need to staff ourselves to be safe for anything that happens. But I don't think we've been matched with volume yet. So we have, if we could get up to speed on our, our staffing model and have um, moved to four people on duty, we have room to grow. We have room to serve. With that staffing model, we can serve a lot more people. So it's, it's really, I mean, I hate to think it's like Lucy with the football already, make us kick it again, but this may be a real opportune time to not give up, you know, um, let, no, a real opportune time to, to give a boost, even though you've been discouraged. Um, things are happening in the, around the county and by nearby counties, and um, I think I would like to invest in this position for this for this at this time. And I came an idea came to me at home today. And that is on March twenty first, two thousand twenty two, I was out of town and you guys um, appropriated ARPA funds, uh, one hundred twenty nine thousand dollars worth of ARPA funds to um, 10,000 to Cincinnati Bell, or not necessarily Cincinnati Bell, but for broadband expansion in the county. They wanted, they're gonna finally take broadband to the county, they're asking each of the townships to kick in 10,000. Um, so you, you allocated 10,000 for that, and the remainder of it you allocated to the fire and EMS payroll. Um, I found out about this a couple months later, but 
I'm on board now. Um, I see that that would, that would be a good use of those funds. Um, about a thousand dollars has accrued in interest since then. But what else has happened since then is Cincinnati Bell said, nah, never mind, townships don't have to pay. So right now we have $10,000 allocated to broadband contractors. They don't want the money anymore. And we're gonna have to amend, eventually amend that resolution. The time is coming where we have to have the ARPA money allocated. And um, unless we're gonna give it, beg Cincinnati Bell to take the money from us, we'll have to amend that document. And I'm just thinking there's $10,000 right there that's already been set aside that we don't need anymore. You know, I don't think we could do 20. We could add another five to that out of there and, and go 15. So um, I, I, would, I would support doing that. Then, then we don't, and I, know, I agree with you, the general fund, I, when we did the budget, what month is this, when we did the budget um, for March, I was, yeah, the general fund was cost for alarm. I mean, we've, we've all been looking at the fire fund, but, um, but that's, a, that's another topic. But we, we've, we've also sprung for, you know, organizational assessments, which we may be saving money on now, and um, a whole lot of money on opposing solar. So I, uh, I guess I would make a, go ahead and make a motion that we use the money that, that we were going to pledge to, to um, broadband in the, um, in the county and take a shot and step up to the moment and not get full, um, no. And um, trust again that we, that, that this could, that this is a time to look forward. So the motion would be to, to reappropriate or switch appropriation. How about if we just make a motion to support them to the tune of $10,000 and then make that part separate, not tonight. But uh, unless you want to be part of the motion, that the original ARPA money that we were going to give for broadband, we give to the YSDC. Normally we would discuss after a second on the motion. And I don't hear a second. Well, then let the record show that there's no second from Hollister Mutual. Uh, I would like to add a point of clarification after we get done with the procedural amount of business. Well, I would support uh, sharing in the cost of this position. Uh, but I would do it uh, as a proportional, uh, basically less, that is, I think, uh, what our, if our budget is two million and the village is 20, then it would be, we would do one tenth uh, of the village. Uh, but I don't really want to get in right now to, <clears throat> arguing without the data as mm -hmm. to how many thousand. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, I think it's a good idea. YSDC should have a contract executive and that we share in the cost. The question is, how much? And I'd like to hear what happens at the village meeting. Now, if if we come up with a number two weeks from now, does that mess up the YSTC's? How do we forward with the draft first? Mm -hmm. And I'd like you all to really think about it. I'm sorry, what? I, I said we're moving forward with the draft first, and I'd like you all to really think about the township's role in the development corporation. I think that conversation is long past. And we, we've had this conversation with the, the street fair contribution with the fireworks contribution well what did the village pay what did the village pay I, I don't really subscribe to that we, we know what we have we know we have funds available and um, we're, we're two different animals they have wastewater treatment plant and 
sidewalks and roads and electrical crews and we're, we're we have a fire department and some roads and okay their general fund and our general fund I, I'm not quite <clears throat> okay uh, I, I, there isn't a magic set I just think our share is uh, smaller so what do you think about seizing the moment that's here where there's a lot of economic development in the um, in the county still yes Bean County not um, many, but more than how, how much this well, I, Lisa tells me what I'm hearing is choosing the precise amount of money uh, tonight does not stop the process. Uh, you do say, look at, you know, are you really on board in broader? How enthusiastic are you? Are you really a partner? Are you really, um, which is a relevant question. A relevant. I meant to say a relevant. <laughs> Can I make a clarification? Um, of the 15 years that the community, um, not community, but the Commerce Park Economic Development Committee was in business, I was on the board of that for 10 years. That was the last hand, not the first hand. And, and during the first uh, two or three, I'm not sure, a long time ago, but that's when. Um, However, it happened, Antioch University obtained seven and a half acres of the Commerce Park, a 35 acre Commerce Park, for its, its building. I believe it was comp to them. I don't think there was any. It was given, yes. I don't believe it was any money exchanged. <laughs> and after that, the, uh, the Commerce Park Committee worked tirelessly to try and attract some biz any kind of business not any kind, but business, uh, clean business, you know, whatever parameters you want to put on that. Uh, never, and, and with some commercial real estate people out there looking also, uh, two or three of them, they went through two or three of them before it was disbanded, um, never got any bites on any interest in the, in the property. Keep in mind, Cresco was the result of one woman's uh, work, Karen Wintrow. She identified them, she negotiated with them, and she got them here. So it had nothing to do with any uh, Commerce Park uh, commission or successful negotiation from, from them. Um, keep in mind, our comprehensive plan makes no uh, place for uh, not necessarily economic development, but any kind of medium size industrial sort of not industrial but light light industrial or clean industrial or there's there's no place in the township that that would be applicable or, or, or to, to put um, number one if it was identified in a place it would need utilities. Consequently, it would be annexed right into the village. So we would not, we would not receive the, the majority of the economic development off of it, the income tax. That's where everybody wants, you know, businesses to land because the income tax is what makes the money. Property tax doesn't make squat. Now, yeah, to us, us little operation, you know, a thousand, a five thousand, ten thousand dollar a year click for uh, property tax, you know, would be nice. But compared to a hundred thousand or a hundred fifty thousand dollar income tax, uh, that's you know chicken feed. But it, again, I want to go back to you know we talked about economic development. Economic development. I love the idea of economic development within the limits of the village, not in Miami Township. Uh, I don't want some place outside of Clifton to be developed. You know the land to be developed to put up a, a little baby battery making plant or. You know, whatever they might be. 
I've sat on regional planning for 25 years. And yes, this project is coming in New Albany and, and Jeffersonville and different places like that. The furthest reach I've seen of any potential development is Jamestown. Uh, I, there's, there's been no discussion of, of, of people who have reached out to further western townships or, or, or villages or, or cities for any of this economic development from uh, the New Albany um, you know, type of South Plus Honda. So I, I, I'm just not convinced that there's going to be a, a massive inroad, influx of, uh, of business in, in, into uh, Yellow Springs and Miami Township. Half the problem is we're not near an interstate. You know? um, well, you said and being five miles away from them is, is, is you know, not you, great. You, you said that <coughs> the Karen Wintrow the executive director of the chamber, uh, give her credit for bringing Cresco. Mm -hmm. So I say, well, does this mean maybe we're hiring another, somebody is hiring another Karen Wintrow who could do, do good stuff? Maybe not from Intel, but well, the we have regional the, world. We have the director of the chamber right here. Are, are you getting a lot of uh, inquiries about putting in uh, businesses in, in the village of Yellow Springs? So, uh, related to the... I will clarify. Intel. I'm interim director focusing on bringing the chamber back to what it was supposed to be, what it's been missing for the last three years without a director. We don't have an executive director at the moment that is paid. Um, so the chamber's primary responsibility right now is reinvesting in the members that we have before we continue to reach out and grow. Um, Has your answering system had any calls for information about places to locate in Yale Spring? Um, that I don't know the answer to. A majority of questions we get are the tourist, tourist base. Mm -hmm. and the chamber has acted more as a DMO than it yeah. has a chamber of commerce. I certainly understand. So um, the majority of the questions we get are tourist based. Mm -hmm. so what's a DMO? Uh, destination Management Organization. So they can, they would be like the Visitors Bureau. Mm -hmm. So that like the CBB would be the DMO. Their main objective is to bring people into the communities, into the area, to increase tourism and travel. And I work closely with Karen, and I don't recall anything that came before Cresco or came after Cresco when she was doing her work. I I think what you've said is a good argument for there for somebody paying for someone in this role, uh, and I think your point that our our plan, our zoning. Uh, outside of the village does not welcome this and that we wouldn't get uh, there would be some change in our tax income but not dramatic um, I support our being part of YSDC I support our uh, contributing to the cost of this contract position. The question is, what proportion? And I'm, I'm not, I don't have the numbers for me to take a position on that tonight. I just want to add, the comprehensive plan, you know, it's, it's, it's aged, I think. Back then, we were all about the green space. Sprawl is coming. Um, and what I think what's good for Yellow Springs is good for the township, regardless of our, of our percentage of, um, regardless of our percentage of the, the, the taxes that would come in. Um, that's all I have to say. Um, yeah. Comprehensive planning calls for farmland preservation as a primary goal. 
and 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 created economic it gets, development as second as gets, a secondary until goal. it gets reviewed. We have to go with what it says. So, Mr. Chair, where are we? What do you want to do? Well, I would support part of your motion, your motion of supporting the position, but uh, not having a, a number in there may not it help Lisa that much. That's what you want. Well, I'll make a motion that township, uh, that Miami Township uh, support the, the motion that we will contribute to the cost, an unspecified amount, uh, of the contract position as executive director of YSDC. I'll second that, although I'm uncomfortable with making a motion that doesn't have any dollar attached to it. Uh, I mean, just a general sort of... Wait, wait, you're, you're doing two things. You're saying you second it. Yes. And then you're quickly going into the stuff. I'm supporting what you're, what you're saying. <laughs> but I still think that without... You know, why are you making a motion without a, a, an end result? of how much we're going to put in. Uh, again, I'll just, you know, I'll vote for it. If you call the roll. My answer in discussion is I need more information. Okay. In terms of the specific dollar amount. You're the chair. Where are you going to get that information from? Well, I might just go look up the village budget. I'll find out what happens at tonight's meeting in the village meeting and uh, I'll uh, ask people around town. Do you have any other no. motion has been made? The second. What words do you have for the motion? <laughs> the movement seconded to support the Old Springs Development Corporation position of a contract executive director um, without specifying a dollar amount at this time. You call the roll, please. Uh, Mr. Hollister. Yes. Mr. Murphy. Yes. Ms. Moore. Yes. Motion is approved. Thank you, Lisa. Fire department report. Okay, um, we had 33 EMS calls, 12 fire. Um, of the EMS calls, seven of those um, were related to street fare, most of which were in the afternoon, all within about an hour and a half of each other. So it got a little, a little crazy there for a little bit. Uh, mutual aid, we, we had no requested fire or EMS calls. We did receive 11 EMS calls of which primarily those were from Cedarville Township but a couple from Xenia Township. Three of those were street fair related um, and then eight of those were second calls. Um, so that means uh, with respect to the eight, this is the typical thing that our back-to-back -back call volume goes up you know, uh, in, in the summer. Um, so those require uh, mutual aid for those. This is just an example of what Maryland was talking about. If we had four people on duty, then we would cover that stuff. But that is, when you said summer, that's because Cedarville doesn't have as many? No, summer meaning our call volume goes up because of the number of visitors. We oh, have. okay. Yeah. Uh, didn't have anything as far as fire goes. A uh, couple of event things going on with YS Pride. Um, just a few inspection things as it relates to like some tents and, and uh, some of that. They do have the parade. Um, I currently only have two people on duty for that, which will mean that we would not be participating in the parade um, 
which does not exactly please me to, to not participate in the parade. So I'm going to see if I can get a couple of people at least so we can get the engine in the parade. Um, was at the chamber chamber board meeting um, last week. Not really a whole lot to report there. I will definitely echo the, what Alex is saying. Is it's very clear to me that the, the board is really trying very hard to kind of get themselves back on track and, and, and do what they really should be doing. Um, so that's actually really exciting actually to, to see sort of as an outside person um, looking at that. Um, engine E1 is back. Um, it had a boatload of work done on it. It does still need um, it needs rear brakes, which will be put on in a couple of weeks yet, but that will be done here in the house. Um, let's see. That's our newest engine? No, that's the oldest one. The brush truck is now down in Springboro. The pump stuff and that finally came in because I was starting to panic about because I got to have that for fireworks. So I was really starting to panic. Um, but um, I don't have an ETA on that yet. I didn't get the opportunity today to, to fire off an email to see how long they thought it would take. But I'm figuring it's probably 16 to, to 24 hours of, of work to, to get that up to speed. But that's all they're doing is, is the pump work. So, um, you know, gave you some numbers with respect to street fare. And, um, you know, all in all, we had such great weather that, you know, seven calls sounds like a lot, but the reality is it wasn't 20 like we've had in the past. So happily, we'll take that. Can you ask them out of attendance? Um, no. Do you? I mean, it was a heck of a lot. We're roughly estimating between 30 and 35,000. Oh, yeah. 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 It was I, I saw that. <clears throat> And I, it doesn't seem to be the busiest, and I've heard 20,000 mm -hmm. as a aerial count a few years ago. Yeah, so on average, the June one is about 22 to 23,000, and the October is between 24 and 25. Um, the conversations we've had with G. Purge is this was definitely more attended. Oh, yeah. It seemed to be more attended. Um, the area, so, like, did we increase the area? So, it seemed like it so yeah, there. we. Um, blocked off all of Walnut Street, which was not the case before. Um, so that allowed, like going up towards Tom, behind Tom's and such, allowed all of that area and space for people to travel. <coughs> uh, we expanded the beer garden um, area as well. So it, it made them, that whole section would be staged, open that up a little more, made it seem less crowded, but there were, um, I actually spoke with Karen Metro, well, Ryan spoke with Karen Metro the other day, and we uh, were very close to the record um, beer sales in the beer garden, um, which is fantastic to hear. Um, well, that's good for local business because a lot of it's Yellow Spring Brewery. Right. Well, well, it's good for the chamber. <laughs> put gold stars out for that. <laughs> well, but I it, did my part. More, right more there. drugs per <laughs> <laughs> um, But it shows that there were more people there to yeah. spend money, uh, which is always a, a well, fantastic thing. Look at how fast, how fast and and how many booze were sold. There were yeah. only three or four three or four that weren't sold. Um, we had a pool of eight um, that were not sold. And um, out of how many? Uh, gosh. Uh, one one forty. I wanna say it's, I think I wanna say it's hundred and eighty. You guys have hundred and eighty but then we, yeah so we do hundred and eighty on the streets. And then um, Tom says all theirs and who else has so one hundred Corey Street sells a number and yeah, the corner sells a number. Artisans, Trail Town, Peaches, Ha Ha's, Tom's, um, Nippers. Um, Tom's was packed. Tom's was packed, Nippers was packed, Ha Ha's and Peaches were packed. So um, all the private vendors would do, like, they, they do sell every single inch of space they have as well. Um, so we estimate about 250 to 260 vendors, um, including all the private vendors. Uh, we also have, so Chief Burge is, is working on that count right now, um, but we also reached out to Green County because they have this place or AI program that will use cell phone signal or the cell phone towers to triangulate the, the number of people within a certain perimeter. Um, it usually said, they say it usually takes about a week or so for that information to come back. Uh, so as soon as they get it, we'll have that. Well, maybe it was that much more. Yeah. It, it definitely felt like it. <laughs> well, when, when we finished our 
our street fair meeting, our pre-street fair meeting, and, and I left the hotel, I couldn't believe, and that was, I, that was actually before nine o'clock. Yeah. And I couldn't believe how many, how much foot traffic there already was. Um, you know, so that was, I think I was probably on the street by about 8.50. Um, so it's kind of surprising. Definitely getting, and it's it's getting, you know, also the other thing is, you know, when losing, losing Karen and all of her experience and, and you know, really in planning that event and everything, and, and these guys have hit the ground running, and, you know, this this one was, uh, it's firing on all cylinders. It, it definitely is. That's terrific. Well, they were, they were setting up, or they were setting up. Uh, in front of Mills Lawn mm -hmm. on Walnut Street, it was like 5:30, yeah. 5:15. It was, I mean, they were, oh, yeah. they were cranking it out. They're serious. <laughs> <laughs> There's no doubt about. It. Well, and it's funny when I talk to other fire chiefs, and they're like, you know, they talk about, you know, the, the vendor business they have, particularly from the food trucks and everything. And then I mentioned what we experience, and I'm like, we we <laughs> we do a lot more than than uh, bigger communities. And it's obviously just a draw to come to come here. So, um, I did have uh, we had a, a fairly significant gas leak on the 12th that was part of the Fisher development. Uh, crews were out there for about three plus hours, basically standing by for you know a gas company. I'm not sure how big the line was, but it was struck by somebody who was digging. Mm -hmm. uh, my understanding is that the line was not properly marked, which has been a little bit of an issue out there in that development for for whatever reason um, but yeah it, we displaced I think it was four homes for for that period of time a couple of people were very unhappy about that and like well when you have natural glass gas blowing 25 feet up in the air it's kind of an explosive problem that none of us want to deal with you know? did, did that have an automatic shell up on that line or? it did no 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 yeah the, a lot of those really don't have um, and and the, the trouble is that even though uh, center point got a, uh, people out there relatively quickly they have to do some things to repair the pipe that uh, and patch it and then they have to wait a, a, about a 30 to 40 minute period of time once that patch is done before they can actually charge the line again to make mm -hmm. sure it's not leaking mm -hmm. so it's not just a okay a 10 minute patch and in your golden again, yeah. it's pretty involved. Um, I I will have to say that we we have uh, placed um, we probably use use the cemetery services and bury our washer that's used for our station linen. Uh, it it bit the bullet about a week and a half ago. What uh, section of the cemetery did you put that in? I'm not sure. <laughs> Natural <laughs> burial, maybe. You don't have sure. to buy caskets. Yeah. <laughs> So I, I'm going to end up having to replace that. The dilemma is, do I just bite the bullet in my commercial one? Um, I've got some estimates for, for they're three grand per unit, as opposed to you know roughly a grand. This one, you know, we got ten years out of it, um, but we repaired it three or four times during that, and we just did it ourselves to keep the cost down. So. I got to look at the budget and kind of try and figure out what I'm going to do with that respect. But I would, if if I did go with a commercial washer, I'm not buying a commercial dryer at this point because I I might be able to swing one unit in the budget, but definitely not both. Um, so that <clears throat> just more of an FYI than than anything else. Um, oh, I, I also mentioned it on. Uh, we did borrow Zinni Townships Gator. Um, we've also uh, done. The, borrowed Springfield Township's gator for the street fair because it's just more and more of an issue for us, even with the bike team in terms of accessibility and, and Wait, some of that. Excuse me, what's a gator? Um, it's like an extended um, uh, golf cart. So you can do things like actually put a patient on a cot on there mm -hmm. and remove them and, and be able to do that. Um, so they're about 15 grand. It's been something that Colin and I have been in the back of our mind that needs to be a purchase, but really it's, a, it's only only money. use you that know. at crowd events. Yeah, well, we would use it for other things, but definitely crowd events would be the key thing. Um, oh, um, 
you guys, I, I'm not sure if I've told every one of you, but you know, we've gone through a lot of scheduling model changes, um, adding you know, the, the full-time positions and that. Uh, our biggest dilemma is how to deal with Kelly days. So, so in, in the past, our Kelly days, each person who was on a 24-48 schedule got a Kelly day a month, which means they got that day off on the <clears throat> Um, we moved that to every six weeks um, because of limited staffing. Um, that's just simply a short-term thing, but that was a better compromise than just eliminating the Kelly days altogether. Um, Nate and I are just continuing to kind of monitor and watch that, uh, trying to address overtime as best as we can, but until we get at least two to three more people on part time. Um, that's that's going to be a, a break. Uh, Fred and I are uh, getting closer to starting to work on uh, streamlining our actual types of positions that we have. Um, you know, I alluded a little bit to that we were looking at uh, going to potential of a little bit of a higher hourly rate, but with no benefits mm -hmm. um, to put us in line with departments that are more or less bordering us who are paying a few dollars more an hour though i'm not sure how you'd want to pass up health insurance but uh, it seems to be i don't know i don't understand these young folks and how their thought processes are but yeah uh, any questions um and I, I know it came at the last minute from the budget for street fair and it was like a week Two weeks before street fair, Brian Cuff had asked. Oh, I'm but for sure. next time, or for maybe for June, or for October, I think what they're interested in is what the actual what it actually costs us to do yeah. street fair. And I don't know how that works. If, if we would be covered, I mean, if we're on duty any anyway, but how, how I guess we charge anyway. So, what so it actually what? does for street fair, then what I don't know if we gave them a bill this time or we not, got not here. So, yeah. and then figure out the in kind, because I think you guys just want to know what's it costing. Yeah. So I will actually do that for June Street Fair. I've got about maybe half the data available. Mm -hmm. All I really need to go back and do now is plug in who were the people who actually came in who would not be part of normal staffing, and then I should be able to get you guys that calculation. Uh, and that really should be pretty darn much the same Street Fair to Street Fair. So, like, it's not going to change substantially at all in the, in the fall. Um, and then what we build then is not the total cost. Is, is that traditionally have not No, been I'm off the top, just anecdotal ballpark, it's about 50%. Yeah. What's 50%? Yeah, they get, they, they get billed about 50% of what it actually costs us. Any other questions? Yeah, and that's partly because 50% of the cost would have been there if there was no street fair, you would have been working anyway. Is that why? It no, no, it's that we we are not billing them the full, the total amount for our services. It, obviously, we can't bill them for, you know, the three people that were working that day that normally would have been here. Yeah. Because their ultimate responsibility is still to cover the calls that are completely unrelated to street fair. Sure. Um, it's only the matter of the, the people who are needed to support that. So you'll have an increased cost just because unrelated to your normal, just because of street fair. But of that cost, you will bill them 50%, not the total cost. Yeah, and I say that roughly, it's not yeah, it's yeah. not a per yeah, sort of. it's just an approximation. Yeah, yeah so I can exactly. actually give you a little more kind of background on that. It, it used to be we the chamber would pay based on the number of vendors. Um, and then last year before Colin left, we switched it after the June event to be based on the staffing. Um, so we're we're actually anticipating to pay a little more because it's more the it is closely related to the direct cost versus the food and crap that we have. Yeah, I, I, I totally agree. I, the, you know, in concept per vendor made sense, maybe at, at some point. It doesn't really <laughs> now. Yeah, it just doesn't. Um, 
it's kind of like growing with growing with street fair and growing with the times. Um, anything else? I, I just don't think into my mind because so many booths are not with the chamber. Correct. And do you do you do inspections for the booths that aren't with the oh, chamber? Yes, yes, we do. Do. You, do you charge them? Mm, nope. So you're charging or charging them, but you're not charging them. Mm, I hadn't thought about it that way, but right. yeah, yeah. And do you guys charge your people? Or you so we, we don't charge any of the private vendors anything. Like that, that, those are, that's all handled separately um, with the individual lots. Um, it's actually very difficult to work with them because they we give them our information and say, this is the traffic flow, this is the, the road closures, this is you know all the information that you need to pass on to your vendors to make it easy and successful. And that's where it stops. So for us, it's, just, it's part of it's part of the event at this point. I know what I mean. The the vendors that we inspect are the food vendors, the the, the food trucks. Um, so like we're not looking, you know, at a vendor who's selling trinkets. Uh, yes. Um, and uh, there's there has been some the the county fire chiefs. Um, have supported actually having, we actually have this, it just hasn't really totally gotten rolled out yet, but we have an actual sticker that uh, county fire departments can go ahead and inspect that. Um, we'll put that sticker on their trailer that covers them for one year, so if they go to another thing in Greene County, mm -hmm. they're essentially covered for not having to have a complete inspection where right now all of us are doing complete inspections on every truck all the time. Mm -hmm. And the fire chiefs were like, we don't necessarily need to do this. We always work together, let's work together on it. Mm -hmm. uh, and so that's been really Fairborn and us. Uh, a couple of other agencies participated a little bit, but just trying to get that ball rolling. This is the first year we've done it. It you know, wasn't super successful, but it'll improve in, you know, as years coming. Um, uh, so that could be a case of some of those other food vendors that might be, say, on Nipper's Lot or something like that, aren't really going to impact us significantly in the future. Fingers crossed. That's that's the goal, anyway. Um, I do have um, two resolutions. Um, hmm? Your copy? Uh, no, but I know uh, I know of them. Okay. So the first resolution, Mark Murphy had dropped down from part-time uh, back to volunteer status, and he knows we are pretty desperate for needing him in a part-time capacity, so he's, his work schedule is a, a little bit more friendly um, in terms of his full-time job at the base. Um, and uh, so resolution I have, thanks Don, I hate reading these. Do you want to read them? <laughs> 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 hey, that worked. <laughs> what would the resolution number be? My notes show it should be 24. So re resolution 2024-24, emergency hiring of MTFR part-time employee. Whereas the continuing need exists to maintain proper staffing within the fire rescue department and whereas Mark Murphy has acquired and demonstrated all the necessary qualifications to serve in the capacity of part-time firefighter EMT for the fire rescue department. And whereas Chief Powell has recommended the appointment of this candidate, and whereas funds are available for this purpose within the fire department's operating budget. Now, therefore, be it resolved that Mark Murphy shall be appointed to the position of part-time fire fighter EMT within the fire rescue department, effective June 17, 2024. Do I hear a motion? To I so move. Second. And moved and seconded. After moved and seconded to adopt resolution 2024-24, emergency hiring of MTFR part-time employee Mark Murphy as spelled out. Uh, Mr. Mutcher. Yes. Mr. Meyer. Yes. Mr. Hollister. Yes. The solution is adopted. <clears throat> the uh, second motion is to put Peyton Cooper into the third. Oh, I misspelled your name. I misspelled Peyton. Is to uh, put Peyton Cooper into full time 2448 uh, schedule and into the pension um, pending physical. Uh, a 
approved physical in that. Um, so that would be uh, resolution 2024-25. Emergency. Shall I? What? Yeah. <coughs> Emergency reclass. Go ahead. Emergency reclassification of MTFR employee, whereas the continuing need exists to maintain proper staffing within the fire rescue department, and whereas vacancies currently exist or will exist within the fire rescue department for the full-time pensioned position of firefighter EMT, and whereas current part-time employee Peyton Cooper will meet all the necessary qualifications to serve in the capacity of firefighter EMT and obtain paramedic and fire safety inspections, inspector certifications within two years of appointment. Whereas Denny Powell has recommended the appointment of this candidate and now therefore be it resolved that Peyton Cooper shall be appointed to the full-time position of firefighter EMT effective June 17th pending approved physical. I'll move for approval. I'll second. I have a question. When do you anticipate the uh, psychological uh, screenings to be started? Um, I have to speak with Fred about that. He had a couple of people that he would recommend. So those, in, in theory, those could go in with, I, I mean, honestly, it would be Peyton could potentially be the first person that would fall into that. Mm -hmm. um, Honestly, I'm a little inclined to not worry about this with him just for the simple fact I've known him for seven years. Mm -hmm. He's not that crazy, um, you know. Um, but um, but going forward, mm -hmm. anybody moving forward from there would definitely be done. The so, only, and your intention you know, is to, obviously your intention is to establish that. Yes, okay. absolutely. Um, I, I fully support that. I wondered how did that come about? Uh, did we decide, or is that something at the at chief level decision? Or? That probably was a chief level decision between he and Fred. It was a. a you know, it has a, to do a, with a, department yeah. business. Yeah. And I heard about it. So, so most most yeah, of the departments are doing that yeah. for full time and I've heard appointment Fred's, um, justification. Yeah, yeah, his justifications are very solid. The next question would be. Would we do that for volunteers? Would we do that for part time versus full time? Uh, you know, I'm I'm a little personally the way I'm leaning is part time and full time, not volunteer, because it's about five hundred dollars a person to do. So it's definitely not a free. And one way to look at it: if you get a career position, we want to make sure you're solid. Yes. Uh, a part timer is easier to. Um, if things aren't working, I mean, yes, yes, mm. exactly. If the town, uh, I won't say this. <laughs> it's gonna make a snarky comment about what about the president? <laughs> you mean chair of the trustees? No, <laughs> I know. <laughs> the chair, I'm sorry. The United States. <laughs> okay. But I didn't say that. You're uh, chief. Did your new pressure washer break? No, it did not. Would you turn around and look through that window? Uh, I, yes, no, they have not pressure washed the windows yet. I, I know that, but I, I, will remind, I will remind Nate, that was that was Nate's idea, so I will remind him, who, by the way, Are, happens to have COVID right now. That's a lot of COVID? Um, yes. Are there other items for the? We have not voted yet on that. Ah, thank you. Any further discussion of that resolution? No. Please call the roll. Thank you for moving second to adopt resolution 2024-25, emergency reclassification of MPS employee Peggy Cooper as specified. Uh, Mr. Mutcher? Yes. Mr. Hollister? Yes. Mr. Moyer? No. Resolution to that. So why is it Dan here for Cemetery and Road? Because it's 96 degrees and he's working outside? <laughs> Could be. 
He's probably dead tired. I, I know I saw his truck in the parking lot, but I did not oh, see him. That's concerning you too. I'll let it go out and check. I, 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 see if he's in his truck. I by text today, but and I know I know he was somebody check work. him right now. Yeah, they're gonna get there. Yeah, we are gonna check. <laughs> Yes. Just so I can get on the record for street fair and say a couple of words. Because um, I'm going to have to head over to the what? street fair for the street fair. I just want to get a couple of words on the record. Um, so, first off, like uh, Chief Paul had mentioned, there were very few calls, very few incidents with a number of people. It was a seamless event. Um, so, on behalf of the chamber, we are super appreciative yeah. of, of okay. the township and Chief Paul's involvement with the, the meetings and the planning. And the just like you said, it's been a world of a difference since October 22 when we started back up. And it really is running like a, a pretty smooth machine at this point. Uh, and that's all in part to having the township there and um, having Chief Powell's people on site. Um, we, it, we couldn't have done it without that. Like you said, we appreciate it. <laughs> it helps. No, you probably couldn't. <laughs> it, it also helps because we have somebody, I think, in common that we're all scared of. <laughs> So, um, so yes, from the chamber, we wholeheartedly appreciate all the efforts and, and everything that has gone into it. Maybe it shouldn't happen, and we're looking forward to getting on the river going. Yeah. And we are performing now. Dan Willie. Thank you. Dan, you're not outside. No. No. Good. Uh, Is this trucking? Are you going to be in town tomorrow? No. But it will be all day Wednesday. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Thank you. Thank you, Ross. So how do we want to handle cemetery and road? I'm not aware. Well, I could jump back into my okay. <laughs> cemetery road hat. Uh, or overalls, I guess, might be the more appropriate. Um, cemetery, uh, they've done a couple of a couple of um, burials in the, in the last two weeks. I think maybe three. I'm not positive. Um, Brandon has. Uh, mowed the Clifton Cemetery at least once. Um, Roger Wright has mowed the uh, Glen Forest Cemetery at least once, maybe twice, both of them. As you, everybody knows, this time of year, certainly with the amount of uh, rain and uh, warm weather that we've had, grass likes to grow. Likes to grow real fast. <laughs> uh, even the, even the uh, Firehouse Prairie is growing again. Anyway, um, I did express to Dan, uh, Marilyn, your request to have the roads uh, narrowed up a little bit. No, I take that back. I didn't because I have a question for you. But your request to have the uh, graves dug in the natural burial and use the truck for storage of the, of the dirt uh, and to uh, and to ask him to go in to dig the grave. Let's say you got the road to go in. There's the road, and to go in from the road into the grave is to be done, and not come from the other road and go into that section also and. And dig, and I don't know why they did that. I got into that habit of doing both sides of the of the road, but I don't like it, and you didn't like it, and they're not going to do it anymore. That's also going to keep the sides of the grave uh, from being uh, pushed down, mainly because then they'll use the boards, and, and because the dirt won't be. I take that back. They won't use the board because the dirt won't be there. And with the dirt not being there, they're, they are going to use the truck? they are going to use the truck. So, Excellent work, Chris. So that should help them. So we'll see. The reason that um, I, I didn't approach the, the, the narrowing of, of the drive, and and we just laid that out as 10 feet when it first started, and then obviously it's gone out. The problem that I see may, may come up is people have gotten into the habit of putting their, their, their grave markers Right on the edge of now the now where it's where the grass is, is mowed up to this point. So if you oh, move yeah. that back, 
you know, a sure. foot or two, and nobody's got access. I mean, realistically, if, if you let the grass grow up, this that, unless they move their stone again up to the front, or we move their stones up to the front. I'm not sure we want to go down that road quite yet. So anyway, that was the thought. Um, okay. Part of this, the stones in the natural uh, prairie area don't have the same kind of foundation. That they no, they have no foundation. They're just they're they're dug. If we put them in, they're the dirt is removed a couple of inches to, to get them on a flat surface and you know not to look like they were just plopped on the top of the ground but you know there's no set foundation um i've been monitoring the, the new water feature uh did you have something specific on that okay i've been monitoring the new water feature and we've had to i've had to fill it uh every between two and four weeks, depending upon the, the weather. When I first started it back up April 1st, uh, it, it, se it seemed to last for about a month, uh, but into May, it lasted uh, a little less, and uh, I, I did it um, at the end of May, and I, I did it again yesterday, and it was almost completely, almost completely down. Uh, little water flowers almost completely down to the bottom of their, of their, uh, of their, of their base, uh, of their jug, whatever that thing called, Boz. Uh, so we're going to keep a little closer to watch on those. Summertime. Is there a hose in? Yeah, I put one there. Okay. Do you have something more? I just said about the grass thing. Um, you know, maybe there will come a time when we take sections and, and move them. It's, I think it's going to take more than, um, it's going to take more than refraining from mowing. Then maybe as we get our plastic scorchers thing going, um, actually solarization, I should call it. We may be doing like a, a three foot or two foot um, that along the, there in sections. But that so they it originally it, it, had that was originally prairie grass. So this so this the seed should be in the ground. It's just it's being the prairie grass is being mowed down. But turf, you know what turf up. is? It'll eat your driveway if you let it. Yeah. And turf is aggressive. It's but let's see. Yeah. 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 Okay. 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 Oh, road. Uh, yeah. In the roads. There. Um, still there. Yeah, they're still there. There's. I haven't any, seen any. The berms need. Any. Uh, need more attention. But, I haven't seen any uh, of the construction or for our roads. Yeah, we're not doing anything that I know of. Hmm. And construction. Repairs. Well, by construction, I mean. Mm -hmm. The thing we do. And any of the uh, black coating. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's a little early. It's mm -hmm. a little early. Uh, they seem to get around to us somewhere into August. Mm -hmm. Um, sometimes they get in November neighborhood <laughs> before they get to us, but it's usually not early in the year. Uh, <clears throat> I'll, I'll be talking later about the pharma inspector, but in taking him to the Grinnell Mill, we went on the uh, on the Grinnell on Bryant Park Road, mm -hmm. and he commented, you know, he was really impressed with this sort of country road that was like a, a wide, fresh driveway, that thick asphalt. Yeah, it's not very wide, but if it was a driveway, it would be wide. Well, that's why I said wide <laughs> driveway. Uh, yeah. And that was not ours, right? right? Yes, it is. Mm -hmm. Brian yeah. Park Road is ours? Yeah, we like see it at the, quite at three the, years ago. <clears throat> at the line where uh, the park, the, the state route 370 ends, and then goes past School Forest and down the, mm -hmm. the hill to the mill. Mm -hmm. uh, I just was impressed. I did want to let you know that because of Dan being up uh, for an extended period of time, it, it you know it's, it slowed normal work down uh, because there was 
other things that had to be addressed, but we, didn't, we were not able to get the bases for new tombstones in before Memorial Day, which we always try and get done. Although they didn't get too many requests from monument people to come and put down bases, which there's a whole story behind that. But anyway, all of those bases have been put in as of either last week or the week before. So yeah, that is done. So whenever the monument people get around to bringing the monuments, at least there'll be a place for them to put. But um, the you know one of the, one of the problems was that it takes two people, two strong people, to put this to mix the cement, to move the the, the, the frames, to move the cement mixer, to move the bags of cement into the mixer. We do you that. Know, huh? You know, yeah, we do all that. And because one of our employees is kind of on some limited amount, then we have to get people from. I mean, we have to ask other other townships if we could borrow somebody to, to come and uh, help. And they have been doing that, but it's not quite as easy to put, you know, to put a lot of bases, get four or five ready to do, because you don't know whether you're going to have somebody to do it. But they got them all. And they, won't, they won't put any more in until this fall, later in the fall. And that, that doesn't have the time of burial, that's like sometime? It's only twice a year. Or twice a year. So twice a year. <coughs> hopefully, before Memorial Day, and then, then the, usually not October. The reciprocity, you know, they they give us time, and later mm -hmm. we give them time. Mm -hmm. We have that relationship with Bath Township and Cedarville. Yeah, and, and anyone else? Yeah, um, Spring Valley will do some things with them. Uh, it's it's not as much as the, the people who are close, mm -hmm. um, but it, it is pretty much Bath and Cedarville, uh, not in the Clark County. Um, townships or um, over by the base, um, I can't remember that one, but it's usually those two that we get the most uh, help with. Oh, I'm sorry, Zenia also, Zenia Township, Zenia Township, that Township, okay. and Seville Township, the three of them. Fiscal officers report. Um, I'm not aware of the details of this, the oh, contract I, I, modification. Well, anyway, that was something you were going to look into, but I told you not to um, midway through the week. The auditor's request, I'm, I'm going to send you guys an Excel spreadsheet, and you, you're going to out instruction on hit a tab and all the invoices that we need, and um, oh, see if any of them that jump out at you that wouldn't be completely obvious for Gina. I could probably send it to you, too. Yeah, I'm happy to help. Um, and the contract modification, I don't know, still don't know what that's about. We're supposed to, for, for this auditor, we need to modify our contract, we need to sign it. Um, that's where we are. And I, I did see a little thing that, I don't know, maybe Margaret never never made a, um, a, a an account, maybe. I, I forgot to ask Jean. You were going to call the state auditor and said, "How do we get into this?" But it looks like the fiscal officers can, can attempt to make a user account. So I'll, I'll ask Jean to do that. Thank you, Gina. Um, got it um, But yeah, it's this this auditor stuff. Uh, yeah. Did you get them everything they need? Is this? The first year we've had, I've assumed that the auditors in the past have been from the state auditor's office. Primarily, we from have the senior we have office private of the state auditor. auditor. We've had private yeah. auditors to work. I don't know, that big one when I first took office was 20, 2021, I think, the 2021 years. And um, I don't know, the, the, that big one we had was private auditors or not. I, uh, we pay the state auditor, why don't they do their job? Well, you know, they get an appointment with the state auditor. I'll write them a letter, oh, a, a sternly worded letter about how you don't want to have and a contract. And I'll sign it, letters. yes. Uh, 
So the con contract modification, we're rolling that over two weeks. No, I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna tell Gina try to make an account try try to make a create a username for that and see how she works. Try to try to create a you know a login for that so we can get in and see why they want to modify our account. Okay. And then pay them whatever they want. I'm not want to sound like an old old geezer on this, but really? I do remember back in the day we were having audits that were running four or six thousand dollars uh, per audit mm -hmm. and then one year after the four or six thousand we had the state do it it was, it was nothing more than the four or sixes but theirs was thirteen thousand seven hundred and fifty dollars so the state was mm -hmm. yeah. okay. Okay, well jasper well I'll, actually i'll make my same argument that they <coughs> They should get that money out of the state budget. Um, but that's not the way it works. Shall we move on to standing committee reports? Yeah, I'll read mine first. Um, okay. Since my first one, MVRPC have no report. Wise Development Corporation, I think we've handled that report. And um, I'm going to go with Natural Burial. We've handled that too. How about that? And I don't know about Green County Township Association. Um, we haven't met since the last. Um, I, they didn't send me a bill for our part of being host last time, but the meal was very delicious, yet humble. So it looked a little homemade. We might not get a bill. But, oh, there, we did get an invoice asking if we have not yet paid our bill, our dues to GCTA, we should pay it. And I remember we paid a Ohio Township Association. Mm -hmm. Does separate. that get paid at the same time? Okay. No. Yes. So, so maybe we didn't. Okay. All right, now that I'm on a roll of, of, of old times, um, back in the day. Click when, when, we could just we, add that as a no, we could. as a agenda old, item old time. Old time, <laughs> old time <laughs> discussion. Old time versus when we when we time. used to host the township association meetings here, I cooked everything for the for the meal. We hosted every single one here, or no? Yeah. Well, not every single one. one. When it was on the turn, at the old at the old firehouse. Yeah, mm -hmm. I, I cooked everything. Yeah. Huh. Did you charge? And I set it up, and I started <laughs> the whole thing. <laughs> did I charge? Oh hell yes. <laughs> did they still have the hosts? Um, what I mean is, we had there's four of us were the hosts for the last one. Did you? They have didn't. They didn't used to do that. So it was always charge? just. Who did you charge for them? Oh, the us? No, I, I didn't charge. Well, yeah, I charged us. Yeah, okay. Would you grill or? Um, I don't think so. Uh, out of order. <laughs> uh, I asked if I could speak. I am <laughs> now I'm terminating. Okay. Green County Regional Planning. Uh, oh, can I, may I speak, Your yes. Honor? <laughs> yes. Um, we met, uh, we reviewed a, uh, uh, an age-old an age old subdivision on, uh, on Beaver Valley Road that's, that's working on their fifth, fifth section. Uh, I think it's their final section. But um, that was all there was on that. Uh, we reviewed some financial, uh, we had to make some financial changes uh, because of travel uh, for conferences. And we had to, I thought this, we had to vote on a in, in interim or interim or whatever it's called, 2% cost of living raise for the employees um, because the county did it. I don't know why the county did it, but, but we had to cough up the 2% also for our two employees, our three employees in, in the middle of, you know, nowhere. So. In the middle of the year. Don't, don't tell Ben that. <laughs> Danny's still in the room. <laughs> the uh, Clifton Union Cemetery Board has not met. Those rascals. Now it's spending their windfall. <clears throat> well, part of when we do meet, we will talk about uh, contributing to the cost of new mower 
Oh, you can take that oh. off that agenda. I was, um, huh. I was mistaken. The, the the new mower is our old mower, and it's not the one that's used at the cemetery. Okay, so, so we're not buying a forty thousand dollar mower. Yeah, we are, but we're not buying it for Clifton. Okay. Right, so we're not asking. Don't have it. Great. And that's, I <laughs> Thank you. Did yeah. <laughs> you just say? Well, maybe there is money for the YSDC. We had to hit up the Clifton Union Cemetery. Well, there's non-agricultural business and uh, agricultural zone cemetery. Mm -hmm. um, New business. <coughs> it is a permitted use, though. Okay. Okay. Just Can you thinking. hand me that Otarma thing? I, did, I gave them to you guys. And we you have know. a couple different Otarma. That's our. Oh. Uh, no, the first one. Ours. The it's an insurance co-op of townships. Risk management. Or not just townships. It's of local governments. You can go first. Okay. So when I first got here, I didn't know what Otarma was. And I said, hey, we got this list of things we should be doing. And I said, and everybody said, nah, yeah, we don't ever do those. Um, but the, the fine print says these may affect blah, 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 blah. So let me just tell you the things that they, they found. This is from when we met with them. Um, Development of a, and implement a disaster recovery plan um, in case of a, you know, terror or cyber or natural disaster, okay? Um, and they, they gave me lots of resources and they, they wrote a paragraph about each. All right. Um, develop and implement an access, accept, acceptable use policy, and that's for computers and devices and hardware and software. And I mean, every place I've ever been has a acceptable use. Otherwise, if somebody does something unacceptable, you don't have a policy that said they couldn't do it on do that thing. Um, you know, Danny was insider trading on the computer in the other day or something. <laughs> I, I'm sorry, Danny. Oh, no, that's, that's funny. Um, develop and implement a password policy. That's, that's cake, you know, like I have one of those actually. Okay. Um, install the devo device endpoint security that includes firewall protection. I, I maybe because it's endpoint. I thought Rebecca is like firewall yeah, to death. Yeah, we're totally covered by that. So yeah. is it when they say endpoint security? Maybe when it, by the time it gets down to the trustee's desk, we don't have any. We yeah, we work completely covered by that. I. I think that. So um, you don't think. I, I think I could just write a statement that would clarify that and we'd be okay. Automated and um, real time protection on access cameras, hardware, network, firewall. We do need to address. We do need to address PC antivirus stuff and upgrade that. I mean, we obviously have current antivirus stuff, but he did want to see something more robust. Okay. And that, that just kind of fell off my radar since we've had so much going on the last couple of months. Provide security awareness training to all employees. It is suggested that security awareness training provide to all employees to ensure employees will be aware of cyber attack methods, blah, blah, blah. Um, make sure they have a solid understanding of security policy, procedure, and best practices. I'm probably about 90% sure I can cover that at least for the fire department, but that might be an option that we could do. So it's a classroom type style training sessions, interactive training. It's not like an interactive training video would take care of that. Yeah. Um, and the last one was develop and implement a payment card security policy. I think that's a credit card. Credit card. Yeah. Our, um, our, our policy manual does have a credit card policy. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not sure I'd have to compared to the one they gave us um, to see if, how good ours is. You know, it's, it's dated and I don't think it's probably changed. But my big point is, Chris, you seem to have a, 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 an opinion about carrying these out. Like, we, they're only recommendations. Mm -hmm. And um, although rec they're recommended for a reason, and I just wonder, 
yeah, they're not gonna do anything to us if we don't do this, but could we find ourselves in it, where we, we're making a claim, something happens, we get hacked or um, somebody goes rogue with a credit card and we make a claim. They said, well, did you do this thing we asked you to do back in um, June of 24? And, and, and actually this guy's contacting me, not this guy, Aaron Willis, his name, he said, okay, we gave you these recommendations. Can you please write back and tell us what action you've taken? And, uh, you know, that's what he's getting paid for. Um, Do any of you know, the, how much will any of these cost us? Not so much in money, but in substantial amounts of time. Um, you know, we just went through all of those that Marilyn read, and we had the opinion that well, it's, it's either been done, or it could be done easily, or it doesn't say really apply all of them. to us. Yeah, I, would, I wouldn't um, say it about all of them. So it, it's, a, you know, it's a recommendation. You know, we'll look through it if it's something we feel. And we've done this for uh, like the road that, that came to mind, and, and they wanted you know, a, a ring around a, a, a gas can you know, that's sitting there waiting to go on. Yeah, I saw that one. And we fixed that. Yeah, yeah, we did a few of those, but same idea. It's a recommendation, not a requirement. And so, you know, I, I don't want people to think, well, we've got to do this, make this, you know, manual for security and disaster and this, that, other thing. But if we decide, you know, no, that might be, not be a bad idea, well, then, you know, we, we can do it. I just don't like the idea that they're, it's like, you know, they're twisting our arm behind our back. You know, you don't do that, you're not getting covered. Mm -hmm. Well, if they, of what they, you, no, they're saying we'll offer you coverage if you do these basic things. If what from what you read off, uh, I'd say we the first two things that is disaster recovery. It's more than that, but yeah. and uh, acceptable use policy. Except we don't okay. have. A, we, we, I could see. Those would require more work that I we're think, not already I think the first one will undertaking. But from what, as you read through, I heard Denny say he could do that, yeah. or we already have that, yeah. or a version of it mm -hmm. for the rest. So I look, this isn't that huge. Okay. The disaster recovery. Recovery, it's not that huge. I think the disaster recovery one is going to take a little bit of effort, but I, I think that's actually time well spent. Um, it's um, going to take a lot of effort, and I think mm -hmm. you'll be free to do it. Yeah, no, I, I agree. Well, I and won't argue about that it won't take a lot. Uh, a disaster recovery plan where we would have to operate outside this building if anything happened? Yeah. Not if anything happens, but if the tornado took the building, you'd have to operate yeah. someplace else. Mm -hmm. Well, I don't have a plan for that, but the, you hope that disaster is somewhere else. An acceptable use policy, that's it. That shouldn't be a big no. deal. That's for policy easy. Um, he said that's probably taken care of. And yeah, okay. So I think the big one there is the um, disaster. disaster. Well, we could, we could have a. We could just do a disaster and then see what happens. <laughs> right. Right. Yeah. Okay. No, practice, <laughs> practice run. If I. I think he sent me a, a some. If I examples. send you the stuff that I have that addresses those issues, as opposed to me sending it to him so he's got one point of contact. Okay. Will you put that together and just draft sure. a response to him? So to then- To him? No, to-, to Oh, yeah. The, I forgot his name. Okay, Aaron. Yeah, yeah Aaron. Um, that way he's only, because I, I don't want to send something to him and you send something to right. him. Well, I'll, send you, I'll send you the easy stuff by email, then we'll- Okay. Well, last year, Margaret and I met with someone from our time, our time, old Carmen, and I don't remember hearing any follow-up. Did Margaret just get it and yeah, email came to us and we it know, or, No, I think an email okay. probably came to us with recommendations and we probably said, yeah. Well, I didn't. So, uh, so tell us about your other old Karma. Fellow. The contra on contract, he said he has done this. And 
in a number of states. He operates out of Chicago, and he, got, he does a sort of physical evaluation of property that we have insured. Um, and it was, he didn't, uh, it wasn't a, <clears throat> Evaluation in terms of recommendations and what we were going to need to do. He just was reviewing. Now maybe we will get a later list, but um, so he was fairly pleased with our. What is it? Uh, it places? just was. It was fun. I, you know, I, I watched him. He was being. Uh, he had a, someone in training who was going with him around. So he went to our. It's, physical buildings, not separate properties. Uh, he went through this building. Uh, it was one of the days you were off last week. Uh, I think it was Monday. Uh, main thing he looked at was our uh, generac, the mm -hmm. natural gas generator, uh, backup generator, and we went over to the, uh, the garage and the Quonset hut. Uh, on Fairfield, and even though we aren't using it for other than storage, we still have the lease on the part of the Clifton uh, Municipal Building, uh, which was embarrassing in terms of the clutter inside. It looked like my house. Uh, but his concern was, my impression was, his concern was structural, like, you know, looking at the roof and yeah. um, foundation and that kind of thing. Uh, and then he was fascinated with the Grinnell Mill. Mm -hmm. uh, and you talked on the phone with him, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and so he had questions like, is there uh, are there sprinklers, uh, fire alarms, that that sort of thing? But it, it was it gave me a slightly different perspective on the buildings that I've already become familiar with. And as I say, it was kind of fun, and he was impressed with Bryant Park Road. Which he was not evaluating. I am not aware of outstanding old business. Uh, we do have a bill from the uh, folks who we were doing uh, organizational, or was supposed to be doing organizational assessment of us, and that's been terminated. And we've gotten a bill for it, but I think we should hold that till two weeks from now. No hurry. Yeah, to decide whether. Uh, I don't have a copy of it in front of me, so. Okay. It arrived in. Yeah. As we discussed, I think it's probably best to do it in regular session. Yeah. Okay. I have no old business, Mr. Chair. Or do I? Um, can <coughs> Chip's only permission to use mom? Just for anybody who cares. Here? Here. At seven? At seven. And I would entertain a motion to adjourn. Seven o'clock. We're adjourned.